Right now at five, a suspicious trailer house fire is being investigated in Jasper County. And we are dry to start our morning. However, showers and thunderstorms returning. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, four state athletes head to Carthage to mark Memorial Day with the Murphy Challenge. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. I'm Chris Warner, so hopefully everybody had a good Memorial yes, Day yesterday. Yes. That's excellent. Important. I wasn't asking you. Yeah. You weren't asking I'm kidding. Me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm gone joking. for how, one how, day, uh, Chris. How was I, I, well, I tell you, you know, how was your Memorial Day though? Was it all right? It was good. It was nice and relaxing. The weather was nice outside. Did you? How about yourself, Chris? It, it wasn't bad. wasn't yeah. bad at all. Just uh, kind of, you know, lazed around a little bit, yeah. relaxed here Nothing and there. Wrong with that? No, not at all. Hopefully, you got to get out and enjoy the nice weather yesterday because it's over. Rain, thunderstorms are returning to the forecast. Now, some good news, though, we're not anticipating any severe weather over the next couple of yep. days, so that's a, definitely a plus, but rain on the way. Let's start with a look outside uh, from our camera on top of the Cordell Complex downtown Joplin. You can see, at least for the moment, the skies are clear. There's a few clouds here and there, and we are watching that sun gradually come up out there. Modoc camera, 32nd in range line in Joplin, also looking good so far, and we'll see a few more cars out there, I'm sure, as the morning progresses. This is what we're watching, and it's just about where it's supposed to be. Remember what we showed on the future track yesterday, if you were with us, just that kind of band of showers and storms right across this area, and that's what's starting to develop off to our north and west. There's that activity. Now, this initial batch may or may not really make it into our area this morning. You can see how some of it fizzles out a little bit as it gets a little closer to our area, but it won't continue to fizzle out. More showers, these storms will eventually make it in as we head uh, later into the late morning, early afternoon. Right now, temperatures not bad, upper 50s, low 60s, so we're relatively close to where we're supposed to be for this time of year. Highs today, upper 70s, maybe some low 80s. And I'd say by about 10, 11 o'clock is when we're going to start to see a few of these showers rolling in as we'll have scattered showers and storms as we head through the afternoon and into the evening. Not everybody will get rain today, but there's at least some of you who will. And again, the good news is no severe weather. So even if you hear that rumble of thunder, no severe weather. But again, remember, lightning doesn't care if the storm is strong or severe. Lightning's still dangerous, deadly. If you hear thunder, you need to head inside, head somewhere safe if you can. Yeah. And uh, otherwise, a warm day. Like I said, these showers and storms are kicking off at least several more rounds of showers and thunderstorms. We'll break down the details on all of that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise? Chris, thanks. A suspicious trailer house fire is being investigated in Jasper County. A vacant residence caught fire early Tuesday morning. A first arriving unit radioed fully involved. Dune Lake Fire was assisted by neighboring departments, including Joplin, Webb City, Dunweg, and Orinoco Fire. There have been no injuries. The Missouri State Fire Marshal arrived in the middle of the night to assist the investigation. McDonald County, Missouri officials are now assisting Bella Vista, Arkansas police searching for a missing kayaker. Christopher Jaglin, 59, was observed on camera Sunday entering the creek near the state line with fishing gear in his orange and red kayak. He has not returned, leaving his car behind. Waters are swift from severe weekend storms in that area. And after searching for a day, they requested Missouri authorities to assist with the search along Little Sugar Creek. He has not been located. Officials ask if anyone sees anything to call 911. Current conditions are too dangerous to enter the waters. And to be the first to see breaking news, weather and sports, download the KOM News app. It's available free of charge in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. Just search for the KOM News app. Midwestern built Carthage joined other gyms around the country to commemorate Memorial Day with a tradition. KOM's Fernanda Silva tells us what the annual Murph Challenge workout is all about. Has anyone not done play? Play. I'm actually kind of nervous about it, but I'm excited. So my thought is if I can just get through it all today, um, if I can even do that, I'll be happy with that. Happiness comes because the challenge is a big one. The event includes running two miles. 100 pull-ups, 
200 push-ups and 300 squats. The intense workout has a name, Murph Challenge. It honors Navy SEAL Lieutenant Michael Murphy, who died in Afghanistan in 2005 and was awarded the Medal of Honor. We are suffering through this workout to try to put ourselves through, through some sort of pain to kind of um, give uh, memory to, to what they went through. The sweat and exhaustion were clear in the faces of more than 60 people who joined the event in Carthage. How challenging is this workout? Uh, very challenging. It's about uh, 40 minutes to an hour and 20, depending on how long you do it, how, what you, how you do it. For birds, an opportunity to work out, honor veterans, and meet friends. I just wanted to see all the gym come together at one time. We usually work out in classes, so I don't get to see everybody at once, so I thought that sounded fun. Uh, plus, Murph is kind of a famous workout that I always hear about. In Carthage, Fernanda Silva, KOAM News. The money raised during the event will be donated to Allison Brown, a gym member who's been battling cancer for two years. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOAM Morning News. The Cardinals and Royals both played on the road yesterday afternoon. We'll have the details. Plus, climate activists in Barcelona spray paint two mega yachts in protest against fossil subsidies. And rain chances return. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOA Morning News. We'll be right back. Guttering and more, don't wait till your roof is rotten. Call John Cotton today. A year ago on Memorial Day, the Royals had a record of 17 and 38, 21 games below 500. On Memorial Day 2024, Kansas City enters the day with a record of 34 and 20. If the regular season were to end yesterday, the Royals would be in the playoffs with a wild card spot. Royals at Twins, Joe Ryan on the mound for Minnesota. He causes KC some trouble in the third. He strikes out MJ Melendez on a foul tip. Next batter. Ron Blanco goes down swinging. One batter later, Michael Garcia goes down swinging and gets the thrown out at the on first on the drop third strike. Ryan gives up one run in seven innings with nine strikeouts. Fifth inning, Twins lead two to nothing. Trevor Larnack blasts one deep off of Alec Marsh for the three-run home run. Twins lead five to nothing. Ninth inning, two outs, Royals down 6-3, bases are loaded, Garcia hits a grounder to third, Willie Castro's throw to first in offline, two runs score, Royals down 6-5, next batter Bobby Witt Jr. grounds out to end the game, Royals make it interesting in the ninth, but the Twins hang on to win 6-5. Over in the National League, the Cardinals come into yesterday on a hot streak. Winners of five in a row. And if the Redbirds can get a sixth consecutive victory, it would bring their record back up to 500 for the first time since April 16th. Cardinals on the road in Cincinnati. We're going to go to the top of the first inning. No score. Paul Goldschmidt drives one deep off Nick Lodolo for the solo shot. And that's his seventh of the year. Cardinals up 1-0. So we head to the bottom of the first. Same score. Heimer Candelario drills one off Lance Lynn for the solo shot. Game is tied at one. Second inning, still tied at one. Will Benson punches one opposite field and in the hole off Lynn for the single. Nick Martini scores. Reds up two to one. Seventh inning, Reds up three one. Fernando Cruz is dealing out of the bullpen. It gets Dylan Carlson to strike out swinging. Next batter, Nolan Gorman, has the exact same result. One batter later, he gets Pedro Pahis swinging. Cruz struck out all five batters he faced. Cardinals get no offense outside of that first inning home run. They lose to the Reds 3-1. to one. The NBA playoffs continued last night. Neither the Eastern nor Western Conference Finals have been overly competitive thus far. Sunday night, the Mavericks opened up a three-game to none lead on the Timberwolves. The Celtics have a chance to sweep the Pacers. Despite the series being 3-0 in favor of Boston, two of the first three games were very close. Same is true for last night. The Pacers and Celtics go down to the wire in Game 4. Fourth quarter just ending right before 10 o'clock last night. 
Celtics win 105 to 102. They advance the NBA Finals for the second time in the last three years. Still to come, we're going to see why one nonprofit is taking in animals whose owners are going through recovery programs. Plus, check of when that rain arrives when the KOAM Morning News returns. Pub for their eight ball pool tournament Sunday, June 2nd. Welcome back to the KOA Morning News 515 on this Tuesday morning. Taking a look at the Skywatch Storm Tracker. Nothing in our immediate area, but we've got a few scattered showers and thunderstorms off to our northwest. So we do have this little cell that might try and make it into Greenwood County. But as you can see, it's hitting this boundary right around Hutchinson where it kind of fizzles out a bit and redevelops back behind it fizzles out. But as these storms continue to develop and you can see we're starting to see a few more thunderstorms embedded in there, they will eventually be able to make it into the area. We're looking at late morning for these storms to make it in here. So 10 11 o'clock by noon again, these are going to be scattered across the area and they'll begin to fill in a bit as we head into the afternoon. So by three, we have a few more scattered showers and thunderstorms. And again, not everybody will see rain, but a good portion of us should, but it's also going to be short lived. It'll rain through most of the afternoon, but as we start heading into the evening hours, we'll see the showers and thunderstorms exit the area. We'll be partly cloudy overnight. Clouds increase though as we head toward early tomorrow morning and that is ahead of additional scattered showers. Now tomorrow we have a similar setup. We're going to see some scattered showers and storms, but tomorrow they're going to be considerably more isolated. So even fewer of us will see rain as we head into our Wednesday, but some of you will see some scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head through Wednesday afternoon and into the evening hours. And that is going to be the setup for additional showers and thunderstorms for our Thursday. So Thursday we're going to have partly cloudy skies, maybe a stray shower here there in the morning then we'll be clearing out a bit mostly clear partly cloudy skies by the afternoon it won't be until the evening about four or five o'clock and we'll see a band of showers and thunderstorms begin to roll through the area so we're not anticipating severe weather with this activity but as you see we're looking at slightly more organized thunderstorms and we could see a stray strong storm out there but as we lose the heating of the day these thunderstorms lose their energy and they'll begin to die out ahead of additional thunderstorm chances as we head into our friday in joplin right now it is 60 it is partly cloudy so you can see some of the light as the sun begins to rise you can see a few of those clouds out there wind is calm humidity is up there again at 90 percent around the area temperatures again not bad upper 50s low 60s as we get this day started so a fairly average day uh, temperature wise to start as we get through the morning again we're looking at partly cloudy maybe even some mostly cloudy skies here and there and then by about 11 that's when we we'll start to see a few of those isolated showers and storms rolling into our area we will be about 77 by late morning and that is ahead of highs today going into the upper 70s could be a couple of low 80s out there and then we'll start to see a few more of those scattered storms as we head through the afternoon hours and those will continue through about six seven o'clock at the latest and those will go and start to clear out and we will be partly cloudy through the rest of the evening and into the overnight hours falling back into the low 60s once again then as we look down the road again we're watching those thunderstorm chances we'll see a few more of those build in on friday saturday sunday monday and so we could see some stronger storms as we head through thursday into friday we're watching the potential for some strong, maybe severe thunderstorms as we start to head a little further into the weekend. Monday, though, is a day we are keeping a close eye on. You remember yesterday we did mention Friday and Monday uh, heading into next week and into this weekend. Monday is a day we are keeping a close eye on for the possibility of uh, strong to severe thunderstorms, at least a little more organized activity out there. So severe weather season itself is winding down, but we're making that transition where any severe weather we see is going to start to come in the form of those cold fronts and the lines of storms uh, that we get as we head through the summertime. So we'll keep an eye on Monday's weather for you. Otherwise, we look to dry out a little bit as we head into the rest of next week. And that's a check of your forecast. We'll be back with Health Watch right after this. It's Ford SUV season. Time to get in your next boat at Arbor's Marine. Helping Health Watch this morning. One nonprofit is taking in animals whose owners are going through recovery programs. Nonprofit Colby Love Can is fostering cats and dogs, but can start to get overwhelming. Steve Nielsen has more. 
Colby knew there was a need, and already she's taking care of 20 cats and dogs for her nonprofit. And now he lives his best life, huh, bud? Yeah. The owners of these animals aren't at the Colby Love Can nonprofit house. The animals are here through the Pause and Recovery program. They take care of pets while their owners go through treatment programs. I saw a number of people that either couldn't go to treatment because they had an animal or or we're going to leave an animal behind when they went to treatment. It's animals in all sorts of situations. I took this cat in while somebody went to treatment and then my daughters called me and they're like, she's pregnant. And I was like, oh, great. Here we go. So now I have her in here by herself. And now she'll help the cat become a mom. Colby's daughter says the demand has been massive and they need more foster homes. She gets calls throughout the day. So many animals that we just can't take in because it's a single pet or something like that. They care for the animals until the owners can again. Until they are better and in a safe place. Colby says it's rewarding helping those who need help the most. It's awesome. It's the most amazing feeling. I have videos upon videos of people being reunited with their animal in their own place. Uh, it's 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 an awesome feeling and it's awesome to watch and to watch the animal get so excited and to watch the person in tears because they've they've come through addiction or they've come through their hard time, whatever it may be. And then to watch them get back together is amazing. New research shows weekly injections of semi-glutide medications like Ozempic, cut, Ozempic rather cut the risk of severe outcomes from diabetic kidney disease. Overall, the risk, including kidney failure and death from kidney or cardiovascular disease, was reduced by 24 percent. The study is based on a drug trial among several thousand people across dozens of countries who were living with both the type 2 diabetes and kidney disease. They were followed for an average of about three and a half years. The research found for those taking the weekly injections, kidney function declined more slowly overall than those getting a placebo. Researchers also found the risk of major cardiovascular events such as heart attacks was 18% lower and the risk of death from any cause was 20% lower. Meat from dairy cow that tested positive for H5N1 bird flu virus did not enter the food supply. The U.S. Department of Agriculture said viral particles of H5N1 were discovered during a standard part of the inspection process. Officials contacted the owners of the cow in question and a probe into the herd where the bovine came from is underway. Samples from dozens of other cows that were condemned for illness tested negative. Additional testing is underway. Many households will be grilling burgers over the Memorial Day weekend, and the USDA advises people to make sure the meat is properly cooked. What's the unofficial start of summer, and Memorial Day also kicks off a season of travel. But did you know that you may be more susceptible to sickness when you go to places? Mandy Gaither has more on the top travel bugs and how to avoid them. Get out those suitcases. It's time to travel, but make sure illnesses don't pack a punch on your trip. You are far more susceptible to getting all kinds of bugs, viruses, and infections in general. Dr. Barbara Bauer with Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center says traveling can be stressful. It puts you around more people and you don't tend to eat and sleep as well, which can make it harder for your body to fight off illness. She says the top travel bugs to be aware of include the common cold. People think of them as kind of fall winter type of uh, diseases, but that's actually inaccurate. Bauer says there's also a bug known as the festival flu, which is a slew of various viral illnesses that spread when people are congregated at summer festivals or large gatherings of family and friends. Norovirus is also prevalent this time of year. It's a pretty potent virus and it leads to things like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and essentially can dehydrate you. To avoid travel bugs, Bauer says focus on hygiene, keep hands clean, be aware of those around you. If someone is coughing and sneezing, try to move away from them. Bauer says give your immune system a boost by staying hydrated, eating a well-balanced diet, and taking some vitamin C. When in enclosed spaces like a plane, masks can add another layer of protection. Even if you just wear it on the flight itself where the air is circulating amongst everybody, um, it's still better than even if you choose not to wear it at the airport, um, that can still minimize your risk. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 
Now to look at some of today's top health stories, you're watching the KOA Morning News. And we've got a bit of a partly cloudy start to our day today. We've got showers and thunderstorms on the way as we head into the afternoon. Another look at that forecast coming up when the KOA Morning News returns. For sale at Furniture Row and soon. Right now at 530, local ROTC color guard honored fallen soldiers with a flag presentation at the Mount Hope Wall of Veterans. And we've got at least a decent start to the day. Partly cloudy skies out there. However, as that says, rain chances returning. We'll have a look at that forecast. Get you out the door coming up. Plus, Memorial Day marked the unofficial start of summer, and what better way to kick off this season than with a trip to the pool? The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOA Morning News. It's 530. I'm Elise Noe. And I'm Chris Warner. So we uh, hopefully enjoyed Memorial yes. Day. If you got yes, out there, got absolutely. to do uh, some, some cooking, maybe just to simply enjoy the fact that it was dry and warm. Right. And not yes. too bad because rain back in our forecast now so we got a break and that break is coming to a close at least this morning though we're starting off pretty nice yeah it's yeah. A, a nice pleasant drive this morning to the station and oh, uh, hopefully you guys uh, when you start your commute this morning it'll be all right let's take a look outside and see how it's looking so far modoc camera 32nd and range line got that sun rising progressively off in the east otherwise we are partly cloudy we are dry and again a few more cars at this time than there were uh, yesterday of course because it was the holiday most folks uh, had the day off all right, Skywatch Storm Tracker off to our north and west. You see some scattered showers and storms. We have one that might try and survive into Greenwood County, but if you watch this loop, you see there's almost a wall. All of this activity is hitting right where my hand is near Hutchinson. See how it just kind of stops. However, we're starting to see a little more organized thunderstorm activity out there. And as this comes together, it will eventually survive into our area and begin to bring at least some of us some scattered showers and thunderstorms by late morning, early afternoon. Temperatures this morning, upper 50s and low 60s, so relatively close to normal. Not too cold, not too warm. It's just about perfect. And as we head through the afternoon, and again, by about 10, 11 o'clock, showers and storms will be isolated initially. Then we'll see scattered showers and storms as we head through the afternoon, and they'll gradually begin to come to a close as we head into the evening hours. Our highs today, upper 70s and low 80s, and while thunderstorms are a possibility, the good news is no severe weather is expected with this activity. That, however, may change over the next few days as we're watching a little more potent system coming in as we head toward the weekend. We'll break down the details on that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes, Elise. All right, we'll see you soon. Well, Saturday night's powerful storm system left serious damage behind in Bentonville, Arkansas. Drone footage from the town shows damage to homes, businesses, and the Bentonville Bike Fest. The annual event brings in thousands, and although no injuries were reported at the event, the area where it was held was destroyed with tents and booths toppled. The death toll from this weekend's storms is at least 21, with deaths reported in Arkansas, Texas, Oklahoma, and Kentucky. And don't forget, you can be the first to know about the day's weather with the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Get severe weather updates sent straight to your phone free of charge. It's available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, the KOAM Skywatch weather app. Well, President Biden delivers remarks at Arlington National Cemetery, plus four staters gather at area cemeteries to remember lives lost as America honors military men and women who gave their lives in service to the country. One of the Joplin area's most historic cemeteries, Mount Hope Cemetery, played host to a special Memorial Day ceremony yesterday morning. The Web City ROTC Color Guard presented flags at the Mount Hope Wall of Veterans in Web City. Mount Hope General Manager Travis Boyd welcomed everyone to the event, saying it was their first service since COVID. Boyd expressed a special thanks to Charlie Tutu Outdoors for getting the event going again. I want them to experience just the, the remembrance of what, we're, what this day is about. You know, it's a nice long weekend, but this day is bigger than, 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 than the weekend. It's, it's about our country, about our soldiers that, that, that died for us, and, and just take that with them when they go celebrate that they remember that. So that's why we're doing this. The event also featured guest speaker 
Colonel Mark Costello, as well as color presentation. Memorial Day marks the unofficial start of summer, and what better way to kick off this season than with a trip to the pool? Schlinger Park Splash Pad in Pittsburgh brought out kids yesterday for fun for a fun-filled way to beat the heat. For some of those kids, it was the perfect way to spend the day. So, if you could have the perfect day for your summer vacation, what would you do? Probably go swimming at the pool. That's fine by me. <laughs> Schlanger Park will be open daily during this summer, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOEM Morning News. U.S. lawmakers visiting Taiwan are vowing to bolster the self-governing island's defenses against China. Plus, dozens of dairy farmers across Europe travel to Brussels to demand fair prices and income. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOEM Morning News. Topping World Watch, climate activists in Barcelona spray paint two mega yachts in protest against fossil subsidies. The protesters, led by Extinction Rebellion and Scientist Rebellion, then held banners reading fossil subsidies are our extin extinction rather, and your luxury is our drought. The protesters claim at least $439 billion worth of subsidies have been awarded to the fossil industry in the European Union. Well, dozens of dairy farmers across Europe demonstrated in Brussels to demand fair prices and income. The protest was held as a meeting of European agriculture ministers was it being held? Farmers took the plaster cows on a walk through Brussels demanding, quote, fair milk prices. The European Milk Board and the farmers want the EU to set milk production price protections to prevent the market price from dipping below cost. Well, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says a tragic mistake was made after an Israeli strike targeted two Hamas leaders in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. Set fire to a tent camping, camp housing rather, displaced Palestinians, killing dozens. Correspondent Trey Yanks has the latest from Tel Aviv. A civilian car drives slowly through the streets of Rafah. It's a makeshift hearse for the bodies of Palestinian civilians. Which humanity is this? Where is the world? Where is the nation? Overnight, Israel launched airstrikes against Gaza's southernmost city of Rafah, targeting two senior Hamas militants. In the process, they reportedly killed dozens of civilians who were sheltering in tents. The Israeli military, facing international condemnation, has opened a rare probe into the incident. The details of yesterday's incident are still under an investigation which we are committed to conducting to the fullest extent. The IDF regrets any harm to non-combatants during this war. The United States is weighing in on the strikes, calling on Israel to use restraint, with the Biden administration's National Security Council saying in a statement, quote, the devastating images following an IDF strike in Rafah last night that killed dozens of innocent Palestinians are heartbreaking. Amid clear disagreements between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu about how to proceed with the war in Gaza. The Israeli leader saying this about the incident overnight. Despite our utmost efforts not to harm non-combatants, last night there was a tragic failure. As the war in Gaza approaches the eight-month mark, indirect negotiations between Israel and Hamas are set to resume this week. And that's a look at some of your biggest headlines from around the world. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the KOAM Morning News. It is now 542 on this Tuesday morning. We are taking a live look from our camera on top of the Cornell Complex downtown Joplin. Relatively calm start to the day. Got a beautiful sunrise coming up. I've had a few clouds here and there, but those will increase as the day goes on. MoDOT camera 32nd and range line also looking pretty good this morning. And same from the MoDOT camera down on US 60 and Missouri 59 looking back to the west. And as you can see, things looking pretty 
pretty good so far. Now, Skywatch Storm Tracker, we've got this thunder shower that's going to try and make it into Greenwood County. We've got another one back behind it. However, a lot of this activity that's been developing across uh, northwestern Kansas has been hitting a wall almost right here at Hutchinson. But as this thunderstorm activity becomes a little more organized, it's going to be able to get through that wall and will eventually continue into our area as we head into the late morning hours and into this afternoon. So what are we looking at on the future track? By noon, a few scattered showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. I want to emphasize some good news is again not anticipating any severe weather with this activity today. As we had later into the afternoon showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms it comes a little more widespread, but again, not everybody will see rain today, but we all will start to see mostly cloudy skies by this afternoon. By this evening, these skies begin to clear from west to east and these showers and thunderstorms begin to exit our area and will be mostly clear to partly cloudy through the evening and initially through the overnight, then toward early Early morning tomorrow, so you saw a few showers, a couple of thunderstorms out there early tomorrow morning, and then we'll see some isolated to widely scattered showers, maybe a thunderstorm tomorrow. Again, no severe weather, and tomorrow's chances look to be considerably more isolated out there, unless you are down into the south and to our southern counties. So, again, not everybody will see rain, even fewer people will see rain and thunderstorms as we head through our Wednesday. And overnight, we see another pause in the activity by Thursday morning, clouds increasing again maybe a stray shower initially. It won't be until the late afternoon and evening hours that we start to see a few more showers and storms. So by Thursday at noon, we're now mostly clear to partly cloudy. And then as we head again, four or five o'clock, we'll see a few more showers and thunderstorms out there. And these will continue into the late evening hours. And as you can see on the future track, it's some heavier thunderstorm activity. And we could see a strong storm or two Thursday evening. And then as we head into our Friday, we're going to see another round of showers and thunderstorms storms and some of those could be strong low grade severe out there. We're watching Monday though very closely. That looks to be our best opportunity for organized severe thunderstorms across the area. So again, keep Monday in the back of your mind. We want to keep a close eye on that over the next few days. In Joplin right now it is 60. It was partly cloudy. You can see a stray cloud or two. We've actually got some clearing skies going on right now. The wind is calm at this point and around the area. Again, not a bad start, relatively close to average. We've got upper 50s and low 60s. So again, close to average and a decent start. Not too cold, not too hot, just about right this morning. Heading through the morning again, I do believe that most of that thunderstorm activity to our northwest is going to have a hard time entering our area initially. And so we're expected to stay at least mostly dry. I think maybe there's... A, you want to talk about percentages, maybe 10% chance of a shower or storm in this morning. Most of us dry, partly cloudy, but as we hit 10, 11 o'clock, that's when those storms out there will be able to overcome that barrier and we'll start to see them rolling in. 77 by 11. As we head into the afternoon, as we showed you on future tracks, scattered showers and thunderstorms out there. Temperatures warm, a close to average, maybe a wee bit above for some of you. As we go upper 70s, maybe a couple of low 80 degree readings out there. By 6, 7 o'clock, the last of the showers and storms out of our area and will be partly cloudy through the evening and overnight hours and we'll fall back into the low 60s. And as we go a little further down the road, that's again when we see the thunderstorm chances gradually increase. Now tomorrow again, much more isolated thunderstorm activity be sitting about 80, 80 on Thursday and we'll start to see those thunderstorms by the late evening hours and into the early overnight hours before they fizzle out as well. But we could still see a strong storm or two, some strong, potentially low grade severe thunderstorms on Friday, and this will be more of an all day event. Once they get going in the morning, they will persist off and on through the day an upper 70s Saturday and Sunday a few isolated to widely scattered showers and storms as well low 80s and again Monday is a day we're watching closely for the possibility of some strong to severe thunderstorms otherwise a little bit warmer low to mid 80s out there after that system though we cool back just a hint down to the mid 70s on Tuesday warming back up next Wednesday and Thursday with partly cloudy skies that's a check of your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOAM Morning News right after this. Johnson, Voorhees, and March. A full weekend event scheduled. Visit FortScottGoodOldDays.com. Today in entertainment news, Grammy winners battle on the Billboard chart and the Muppets' first movie returns to theaters. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Baby, I think you were made for me. Somebody write down the recipe. 
Billie Eilish has outdone herself. The nine-time Grammy winner's new album, Hit Me Hard and Soft, debuted with 339,000 equivalent albums sold, her best first week ever. It wasn't quite enough to knock Taylor Swift from the top spot on the Billboard 200 album chart. The Tortured Poets Department is number one for the fifth straight week. Yeah, well, I've got a dream, too. But it's about singing and dancing and making people happy. Kermit the Frog and Friends are back. 1979's The Muppet Movie is returning to theaters for its 45th anniversary, with screenings on Sunday, June 2nd and Monday, June 3rd. Head to FathomEvents.com for theater locations, showtimes, and tickets. Humming the Rainbow Connection in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. A tense and destructive high-speed chase is kicked off when police say a prospective new car Fire swipe the vehicle instead. Jeremy Roth has today's take a look at this. We've got cars, we've got ducks, we've got reptiles run amok. Take a look at this. A test drive turned into a tense police chase in South Florida after authorities say a woman went to a car dealership and allegedly made off with a new car while trying it out. I mean, I know new cars are pricey right now, but come on. Police were alerted and caught up with the driver who slipped away from a salesperson during the test drive and led a high-speed and destructive chase, weaving through traffic and clipping multiple vehicles before crashing to a halt. Then the suspect is seen jumping into a lake in an attempt to flee. She was eventually pulled from the water and is now facing a slew of charges. Speaking of a need for speed, it's May, and in Indianapolis, that can only mean one thing. The Zoopolis 500, where fleet of foot tortoises compete for the checkered flag at the Indianapolis Zoo. And they're off! I think they are moving, aren't they? Okay. Four radiated tortoises were named for real drivers in the upcoming Indy 500 and put on a shell of a good show as they were pitted head to retractable head on a miniature raceway. In the end, Slow and Steady won the race, and all the competitors got to enjoy a fruity treat in the winner's circle, which was about as exciting as the race itself. Finally, why did the duck cross the road? No, I'm really asking, because this giant inflatable one clearly got loose from somewhere in Michigan when high winds took it for a surreal stroll in front of some motorists who were heard to remark, What the f***? No, the duck! Hey, she's a profane poet, and she didn't even know it. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. We'll be right back. Students in Henderson, Nevada are getting the scoop on voting. The kids practicing what it's like to cast a ballot in their school's ice cream primary. The students got to pick from bubblegum, chocolate, cookies and cream, and vanilla. And the kids following their favorite flavor candidate along the campaign trail all the way up to Election Day in November. The votes for this primary election will be tallied up, and the most popular flavors will advance to the general election ice cream vote in November. Well, fire up the grill or head for the drive through or your favorite restaurant because today is National Hamburger Day. The day doubles as International Hamburger Day and wraps up National Burger Month. It also ushers in the summer grilling season and it's pretty clear how to mark the day and you can post your burgers with the hashtag National Hamburger Day. Some fun facts, Americans eat tens of billions of burgers a year per person. It comes out to about four a week on average. Worldwide, hamburgers make up 60% of sandwiches sold. Today is certainly a good day for a hamburger. So if you needed another excuse to get out and uh, grill, well, unfortunately, it's going to rain today. But maybe, as we mentioned, you can go to your favorite restaurant and pick up a good burger because today is National Burger Day, a great day for burgers. Now, we do have a thunder shower entering Greenwood County right now. However, 
most of the activity it's off to our northwest is going to have a bit of a hard time getting down here what looks like until about 10 11 o'clock i'm saying there's maybe a 10 percent chance we'll see a shower thunderstorm before we get into the late morning hours but it's not completely zero but i think the better opportunities will come late morning into the afternoon It'll be 77 by 11 we'll start to see a few more of those scattered uh, showers and storms out there those will continue through the afternoon again they'll be scattered not everyone will see rain but we will see some showers and storms today the good news is again no severe weather expected highs today upper 70s maybe a couple of low 80s showers and storms are out of here by about six seven o'clock partly cloudy through the late evening and overnight hours back into the low 60s we'll have a few isolated storms tomorrow more storms thursday night some of those could be strong thunderstorms continue through monday and we're watching the possibility of severe weather on monday let's check your forecast we're back with more right after this stream koam news now on the tv app available